Everybody in the club, I can't hear you. Woo, 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 woo. Put your hands in the air. Woo, 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 then do woo, some shoulder woo. rolls. Woo, woo, Shake out woo, your wrists. Woo, woo. You know, waft the artistic impression into your sinuses and really breathe deep. And then breathe out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you've got uh, so like a freshly sharpened uh, pencil, just give that a whiff. A freshly sharpened mind, just massage it a bit. Yeah, just get <laughs> centered, really in the zone for some art time. Art time, art time. So, um, you asked me for a topic today, Corey, because you you did not want to pin one down yourself um and i do have a particular uh topic in mind but right before that hello this is coriander dickinson host of this lovely show uh and i am uh matt griffith's uh sidekick today of this show um frequent watcher sometimes drawer um and I do have a show for you here. So I'm just going to open that up uh, and present it to everyone. All right. Here we go. Is it up yet? It's up. OK, good. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Can't Draw Horses Club. Today we have a lovely topic for you. It is heightened symbolism. Now, I've chosen this topic because I do enjoy it. But what is it? What is heightened symbolism? Now, thank you for asking that question. I made up the term. I don't have a BFA. I'll never have a BFA. A BFA is irrelevant to the enjoyment of art, mom. And also, it's very expensive to get. So um, I'm not pursuing that particular piece of paper to hang on my wall at this moment. Anyway, ha let's have some examples of heightened symbolism. Now, as a uh, local homosexual, I will start with the gay examples that come to mind for me at this moment. Here you can see one Lady Gaga surrounded by forlorn people. The one in orange and yellow, it's a firefighter, but it's been made fashion. Over here, there's a sad woman in purple. Uh-oh. They're dead, but what does it mean? Over here, we have some more forlorn people, one in white, one in black. You see an intense dualism there. The parasol that they are twirling around symbolizes a siren, not the mythological one, but very much the mundane one, but it is still a metaphor. Wear ear pro either way. Yeah. <laughs> Over here, we have some eye pro on two different people of two different styles. One is a she sheer black, the other gold filigree. One will protect you more than the other. Either way, the shell is an oxygen mask. Over here, we have people living life, having fun, and living crazy, sexy, cool as they did in the 90s. And there is also a horse which is a metaphor. But let's do a close reading of one particular frame. Here we see a woman in white and, oh no, there's a snake. Snakes are deep and heavy in metaphor, symbolism, and allegory. But what about her hat? It looks akin to something like a Russian royal headdress from way back when. But maybe it's just the shape and color that they're using in this particular instance. We don't know because they haven't told us. But the Red Cross is going to sue because there is a Red Cross present here and one Lady Gaga did not ask permission to feature it in this film. Uh, the woman it, herself, she is holding the snake, which means she has power over it. And you know what I call that? Big, ofucious vibes. And there's deep, heavy symbolism in Ophucius. But I know all of you, uh, unlike me, um, all relate to the 
condition of being a gamer. Only some of you are gay, but all of you are gamer. So here's some examples for the gamer in you. They are nicely organized in rows and columns with numbers and names. Over here we have drama, given the number three, but that's irrelevant to our discussion right now. In the image, there are many faces and one body, which means the symbolism is many guises. All the world's a stage, and this particular bad cop is playing many parts, thus a drama skill of three. But the drama could also be the many faces, many guises, and many lies that he is telling to himself or others. Over here we have esprit de corps, which is slightly different from drama in that there are many faces but many bodies, which equals an in-group identity or a sense of it. But as the image shows, there are many eyes directly staring down the viewer, which means that they have an in-group identity, but you may be outside of it. Over here we have the physical instrument, but the head is not actually rendered, the body is. No head means acting without thought. There is an emphasis on the brute, effective, and direct approach. And over here, it's very simple for composure. A straight line means stability. We all know this. It's Art 101, so let's move on. But why, though? Why this heightened symbolism? It's fun. I mean, that's all we have to do, but I'll go into it a little bit more. There's a heightened emotional response to this heightened symbolism. And as an artist, sometimes that is what you specifically are going out and making the art for, is a heightened emotional response. There's also a vibrant image and a clear metaphor. For all those dummies in the back that are 50 feet away and can't quite see all the texture on the canvas. Sometimes the vibrant image allows it to uh, really project out into the back rows. And because of that, is it is an accessible artistic intent. I know for me, I want my art to be accessible because accessible art has a wider appeal, a wider impact. And really, is it not an agonizing ecstasy to be known by another through your art. Anyway, here are my sources. The 911 music video by one Lady Gaga, as mentioned before, directed by Tarsim Singh, inspired by the movie, as Singh has said before, The Color of Pomegranates, by one Serbian director, Sergei Parajanov, or Parajanov? I'm not Serbian, so you'll have to ask them. And also Disco Elysium, for all the gamers out there, developed and published by one Zaum, art by Alexander Rostov. Thank you everyone, and I hope you have a fun and enjoyable artistic evening. And we're back. <laughs> so how does everyone feel about uh learning all that so the color of pomegranates the color of pomegranates is a movie about an armenian poet mm. so it's set in armenia which has one of the oldest uh catholic churches in the world so your russian crown lady might be more read as like a bishop like orthodox like an orthodox bishop eastern orthodox also i'm doubling again i'll fix that thank uh, you and there we are the snack the snack the is it a biblical reference it, well i'm as much as like a caduceus is in any given day like that's what the big ofucius vibes were for me um, because Ophucius, the snake handler, the 
I think some like to call it the 13th. Um, I mean, it was added to the Zodiac, the 13th Zodiac, like ten, eight years ago, maybe. Right. Um, it's a Fuchsius as a figure is supposed to signify humanity overcoming nature and because the snake has venoms and poisons uh, is supposed to signify uh, overcoming those venoms and poisons in a medical sense and like you know wrestling with all of that to create your own uh, solutions and uh, medicines. Yeah, the snake thing is always like, uh, this is a poisonous, deadly thing. Yeah. But poisons in like small controlled amounts can be helpful for health. Yeah. And so it is the, the, the duality of that that is really strongly tied to medicine. Yeah. The uh, source of the poison can be the source of the salve. So, yeah, in in the Lady Gaga music video, this is just like this whole dreamlike state. Even though at the beginning, she's she's clearly been in a bike accident. Yeah, that's that's the entry point. And then at the end, the the veil is lifted, and all of the the uh, I guess dissociation is revealed, like. The everything in the in the music video is like very direct allegory. Like there's just well, a, a, like a one to one. It all moves by so fast because the song has a fairly peppy beat to it, really. So, like that is why I mentioned at the end there, like describing why you would use heightened symbolism of it being very accessible and very direct metaphors and similes and allegories and all of that because um, that is what you want at a glance if you're using a moving frame as you do in a music video or if you just want it to be um, very legible at a glance just in a gallery or whatever but it is especially particularly important for a moving frame uh, just because there's the temporal aspect that you can't pause it necessarily. So you, your first impression is your only impression. Also, um, that music video, I think, came out like a year, two years ago. Right. I only discovered it like a month and a half ago, <laughs> which is why I'm bringing it up now, not before. Look. We, we we have so such limited time and there's so much content yeah like, yeah you didn't even know about donna summer like last year so oh i didn't like um i don't know if i told anyone else but i was talking with corey just in passing about donna summer uh who i now am have internalized it's donna summer not donna summers God, you wish there were more than one of them, but you know. Uh, <laughs> um, I only discovered that like half a year ago. Like really actually discovered her music instead of just hearing the odd one in passing. She's got some bops. She got some bops, some boops, some bangs, and some shuffles. But mostly disco. Yeah. <laughs> and all you gamers out there can really connect to that because of Disco Elysium. Uh, <laughs> so what are we actually doing? What are we doing? We are uh, taking the idea of heightened symbolism. And my idea is to recreate things like the Disco Elysium aspect. Um, avatars, however you want. Spirits or whatever, however you want to interpret them. Stats. Stats persona um and make our own kind of stuff there taking i guess some sort of emotional metaphysical prompt 
and uh, just playing with it, you know, making something fun. Sorry, now I'm, I'm my my brain just went to Persona Five, and now I'm just thinking about the slime penises, which are oh. just it's Mara? just like not even a metaphor at that point. Oh. oh yeah, no demons are rarely if ever ever metaphors. They're very much in the physical realm. <laughs> But uh yeah, like what what kind of um things do you think chat would want us to absolutely ruin on the canvas, do you think? <laughs> Anything and everything. <laughs> Anything uh, and everything. Let's start with like the standard D D stats or attributes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, to do like strength. Constitution, dexterity, wherewithal, yep, um, sense of heat, innuendo, yeah, yeah, encumbrance. All right, so I think I'm going to, I guess, oh, uh, lose my entire desktop underneath something else. You just figure out. Oh, I know what I did. Okay, everyone close your eyes for a second. There's big secrets being revealed here. Ta-da! I saw nothing at all. Yeah, also my face has, has gotten... Oh, it's I'm on top of you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah. Figured it out. Everything else is good. Everything else is is good. Uh it's good, it's great, it's lovely. It's gorgeous. I might have to do that again because my canvas is not showing up on the screen while I'm doing this. Uh no one can hear you. There we go. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, guess I was going to make a list of uh, what? The prompts? Well, kind of like a little mind mappy. Like, what What even is strength? What, what's shorthand for strength? Uh, ox or a bull. Um, a himbo. Um, so that's just like the 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 ideal strength. At least for some people, yes. Mm. That's weird. I'm still trying to learn how to use this uh, oh, program. It's paint on that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Why would you ever be sorry? Well, you know. So strength is our first one, right? Yep. Well, there's also the image of uh, the tarot card strength that you can pull from as well. I don't know what that looks like. It's a woman and a lion. And she's just yanking that lion's teeth open like the lion has something in its mouth. And uh -huh. she's like, no, no, no. What's in your mouth? What's in your mouth? Give it up. <laughs> it's that kind of image. Uh, and I think she has an infinity symbol over her head. And that's kind of all the big points. So it's like... Power, lions, teeth. I'm not drawing baby arms, Angel. <laughs> uh, let's see. There's also different kinds of strength, like stability is a type of strength, endurance is a type of strength, although endurance is also a different stat, so maybe not that one. 
Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> emotional strength, psychological strength. Uh, so what you feeling today? Oh, yeah. Angel actually put up a atlas holding the world is a typical thing. So just like... Big ball. Big ball. Just can I get guess you spread eagle it? Spread eagle level. You gotta get that wide stance for power. Yeah. Um one way that a character designer might add the idea of more power to a character is uh making their upper thighs that area uh thicker as like a heavier thicker trunk to the body like a big beefy thigh it's like uh garnet and steven universe for example is an example of that why am i refining the sketch layer uh there we go <laughs> big beefy yes thigh. exactly like that as uh julia mon says big dumper like a Pixar mom. Yeah. Epitomes of strength. Paragons. What is the strongest force? Is it strong force? Is there a force called strong force? Yes. Great. There's also a weak force, which is shockingly weaker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean the nuclear forces, yes. Yeah. Just, you know, fundamental keep everything together forces. Yeah. And of course, we all know the strongest shape is a triangle. What if a person is holding a big lion? And it's it's like both the Atlas thing and What if they were drawing what if they were holding a very round lion? A very round lion. Just a orb. How have we gone this long talking about strength and not brought up Popeye? Regrettable. Well, Regrettable. he's got forearms like a dump truck and not, not so much in the, the leggy area. Yeah, the 20s were a different time. He's from the 20s, right? I guess. I guess. Alright. Sketch layer. Rename layer. Why is it so hard to do anything in Photoshop? I want your settings. You know, you really should just use paint.net. <laughs> No, I'd rather use the thing that I pay $80 a month for. The fact that it's per month, mm -hmm. I'm just astonished by. Uh, actually. gonna pull up some some side reference that no one will be able to see of uh, a lion so i know what a lion looks like looking up um um lion king it's just a lion okay okay uh and now i guess i need to look at what a human looks like <laughs> no examples nearby.
There we are. Using my stylus when I could more easily use my mouse. I want my person kind of roughly in this zone. Aren't you proud of me? I'm actually using layers. <laughs> I that's why you you got that program. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you proud of me, Mom? I'm using layers, and I'm even drawing not on the sketch layer. This local turnip man is going to be wearing a tank top. I want to really like emphasize the symmetry. Yeah, symmetry is a good uh, symbolic, metaphorical thing. <laughs> I had a presentation about it. Oh. Just refer to those words I said earlier. <laughs> Yes, I gotta give this person a loincloth or something. You know, for their loins. Let's let's count in the barbarian this. Alright. Now for the cat. Alright. My turnip man might not be very symbolic, but he is happy. We're gonna get the, the chin down low enough on the, the cat head. Cat head. Oh lion, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm like, sorry. Are, are you are you making a ancestor to bast? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm giving the, the person a cat head, yeah. Hmm. 
Oh, that's how you replace colors. Great. Totally what I was going for. <laughs> oh, that's not how you pla replace colors. Okay, there we are. <laughs> I mean, thinking of like a human with a cat head as the Egyptian goddess of Bast was, um, that just brings me to the thought that fursuiters are incredibly strong of will and spirit. Because existing in a convention without wearing an all encompassing suit of fur, right? Physically is uncomfortable the entire time. Wearing that fur all encompassing, I'm surprised we don't get more heat stroke from this demo, right. It's an, an inspiring tale of uh, endurance and strength. Okay, I think I'm going to pick some colors. You know. Yeah, that that's brown. Um, and I guess I'll pick a desaturated version of that same thing. Just don't stretch have to, my hand a bit. I don't have to go too complicated on the colors. I can probably just get away with three. Oh, yeah. There's that old standby bit of wisdom for making art. Just do what feels good. Just do what feels good. Okay. What do I call this layer? This will be... Flocky. Yeah, that's a great name for a layer. You're naming your layers? Yes. Oh, and I should save. Ha-ha! Once I've done these feet, I will save. Since I've said it, I have to do it. The nice thing is, since the topic is um, metaphor and symbolism, we don't have to be accurate in our uh, portrayal. Um, because it's a metaphor for the real thing. Yeah. Okay. How do cattails even work? Uh, they um, they wiggle around. Mm -hmm. 
when they're thinking about something, usually doing mischief. And then when they do the mischief, um, it just goes like straight out. Right. And once they've done the mischief, it slowly wiggles around in contentment. I really should move this down here. Here we are. All right. Excuse me. And the bar will be this color. Okay. <laughs> Save that, add a layer. That layer will go behind that layer. And now I'm working on that layer. There we are. That's good. Simonark in chat totally got the metaphor. The dumbbells with happy and sad faces, it's supposed to be tragicomic because the strength of self can be physical, but it can also be strength over one's emotions and control over them. That's the message of this image. if this was like a, a disco elysium style portrait it would be mostly in shadow and then just kind of surface lit the one you're doing yeah i uh yeah, I'm not trying Disco Elysium style for this one. Well, the... maybe if I fill in the background a bit more. Uh... Yeah, like this is not going to go further than a sketch for me. I yeah want to try out more, but it's it's useful for thinking about. Oh, opacity, there we are. Actually, all right, I'm on the blocky layer. Shouldn't be doing my lines on the block layer. I'm a criminal. Take and I'm a criminologist. Jail. Take me to jail. <laughs> I am Miette, and I am sentencing you to 1,000 years jail. Jail dungeon prison for mother. Thank you.
guess I should give him packs or something. <laughs> if you want. Boop. Boop. Make him a himbo. There you go. Oh, those are some mommy milkers right there. I say that phrase whenever I can. I'm sorry. <laughs> My partner hates it. I absolutely hates it. Like, it's almost grounds for divorce, Matt. Have you considered that? Mm, too bad. I don't care enough. <laughs> I'm just following my passions, and one of them is saying mommy milkers. <laughs> mm -mm. <sighs> I mean, what, isn't it a standard part of the homosexual male experience to look at a dude on the street in passing and just think like, dang, he got some nice big mommy milkers right there. You know, I, I can't, I can't speak to, to that can't experience. Relate. Um, can't relate. No. I, I, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, such an alien thought. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm trying to relate, but sometimes you just can't, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can add in a little bit of dramatic background. Maybe it should go behind. It did. It's that stuff is just slightly <laughs> not opaque. Uh, huh. I'm not sure how to be able to do that then. I guess I'll just have to go around. I'm putting all my things in a folder and then hiding them from the world. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Clean slate. Like it never, never was a thing. Right. Crimes? What crimes? Huh? Me? Do a felony? Sounds fun, but no. Never get me alive, coppers. And again, we relate it to Disco Elysium. Okay. What else would be fun? Uh, wisdom, perhaps? Ooh, wisdom. Going for that Minerva, that, that uh, I was going to say Artemis, that... Uh, well, one form of Athena. Artemis, because she's uh, got a, like a trinary thing going on. Oh, yeah. It's her... And Hecate, and I forget the third. Is it like Celine? Are it supposed to be the three aspects of like the moon and other trinary things? I don't think Artemis's name changes. Uh, Celine Dion, yeah. Yeah, Celine Dion. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean Celine as in, you know, from Sailor Moon. Let's see, Wisdom is uh, shutting up and never posting. 
Don't tweet. <laughs> Don't tweet. Get off the bird site. Delete your Get account. Get a bird. I know Ian would say wisdom is getting a bird. Uh, I think Ian would uh, suggest uh, considering the lifespan of any potential pet pets before making a commitment. Don't know if you need to create a legacy problem yeah of a living animal um hmm. it's wisdom like an inaction kind of choosing when to act yeah patience patience prudence yeah prudence being a big prude. Equanimity. Getting all your prune juice. Regularity. Mm -hmm. Regularity. Um. There's a wisdom of prunes and also wisdom of the pruned. Um, those who have experienced the uh, hot waters of life for a long time and, and have learned from the experience. Wait, no, there's a mother mother song about this. I think I might have a solution. Is that the name? Wisdom? Yes. Oh, no, no, the song is about getting wisdom. Mm. No, it's not going to. Mother mother has no answers. Oh no, mother. There, now it looks dramatic. Good work. All right. Uh, new. Oh, Pixel Art yes. Dragon's got another song stuck in my head now by bringing up Ecclesiastes. More like Ecclesi Nasties. Am I right, gamers? <laughs> when they say there is a season, you know what they're talking about. They're talking <laughs> about the nasty. <laughs> <laughs> there is a season and a reason for being nasty. Once again, I'm going to put down a square to limit myself so I don't go too wild. And that is uh, practicing wisdom. Oh, you're right. That is the birds. We've gone full circle. Wisdom is Inspirobot. I believe. Inspirobot? Yeah. Is that a bot that tweets? Because I, I think that's already, well, it's already a bot, been addressed. It's a bot that, um, I was going to say manually, the opposite of manually, automatically generates inspiring images to hang up in your office. I have one of those. <laughs> Thank you for that quote, uh, TXC2. <laughs> I need to check out what all my quotes are in the database. Because I think I sound a bit wild on there. <laughs> you think? It's just a feeling I have. I'm intuiting that. Oh, it's more than a feeling. Ah, this is actually too small of a square. 
I've made a mistake. Gotta go there. big or go home. Bigger than before. Um, how do you want to address wisdom? I don't know, because um, patience gets me like water imagery, but that goes along with like erosion, which isn't what I want to communicate. Well, related to that is also a buildup of sediment from the water, which is much like the buildup of wisdom over one's life. It comes from outside and it just kind of accumulates in yourself. And after a while, you examine yourself and think, wow, where'd all this dust come from? Maybe like tree rings? Yeah, yeah. Probably more straightforward metaphor. Yeah. Then I could do like dark rings for like if there was a fire. That might be fun, even though it's a very simple thing. I'll just mm -hmm. move on to another one if I finish this one before end of stream. Uh, we're only going till three today. So, it's a jam bag day full of um, content. I'm actually, going to steal the same colors. How very wise and prudent. Mm. Uh, Just like dear Prudence. A deer named Prudence. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you should draw. <laughs> Dear name Prudence. Dear name Prudence. Come on. Okay. Hey. So I think polygon tool is what I need here. Or an ellipse. No, I need like an arbitrary polygon. Yeah. All right. Feeling a little arbitrary? Yeah. All right, gonna draw some bark. Gonna draw some bark. I'm imagining the smell of sawdust. Oh, God. To me, the smell of sawdust is the smell of a nosebleed. Really? Yeah. You don't get, like, that sweet pine, like... The umami of the pine? Uh, not... Umami, because it's like a greener smell of like the cellulose. Like what celery smells like. Mm, mm. But less wet. I can be pretty wet. Wet sawdust? Yeah. I don't think wet sawdust really gives off much of a smell though, right? To each their own. Yeah. Fair. Are you also doing wisdom? Yes. 
And I'm making it the uh, deer. Prudence the deer. Prudence the deer. Why is Prudence yeah. wearing a hideous tie? Um, because it's covered in script. Um, because it's a, a symbol of past knowledge being passed down. And that means wisdom. That means wisdom. Okay. So if I... If you were a deer named Prudence, how would you feel? I'm just trying to think of like a good way to uh, either speed up making the lines or cheating. Because I could get like a foreground color and a background color and then just go between them while shrinking a selection area. But it is time for our break. <gasps> Okay. So stay tuned for more fun after these messages. Guess what? It's the local gamers back with more gaming. That's right. We're here gaming it up. Uh... If everyone's checking the tags, you'll see that vaccinating is allowed. <laughs> uh, with Corey and Matt, the art gamers. Uh, that's... It's what we're known for. What we're known for. It's who we are. It's who we it's, are. It's what we... Um, what we're driven to. Some, um, some would what... call it a calling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, currently I'm drawing a tree to represent I... wisdom. Mm, yes. And I'm drawing a deer to, um, to represent the killer of the tree. Um, but the deer also represents wisdom. I see. I see how it is. All right. I'm going to try... The thing I said I might do where I select a thing and then shrink the selection and then just fill it. Just fill it. Yeah. Does feathering go out or in? Let's find out. Depends on how you said it, I think. That looks like an Audi. Let's invert the selection. -na 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 -na. Bro. Bro, you inverted Bro. your selection. Feather. It's a 20 billion. Okay. I see how it is. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. More. Yes. A good start. Uh, and then I guess I'll invert that. And maybe I should actually just draw in the selection area. Or should I fill and then invert and shrink again? Let's try that. Oh, that's a lot of feathering. Is that Let's not see what where you it goes. Want? Let's see where it goes. I'm, I'm going to invert it again. Uh... Nothing bad will happen if you keep going. Inverse. Feather. <laughs> select inverse. No, that's select mask. Get out of here. Get out of here. I didn't even realize that I sneezed directly into the, the stuff. 
I did not hear it, so you should be good. Okay. What if I st stroke? Don't have a stroke. <laughs> If I just keep doing stuff, eventually the JPEG ringing will Be just good. make rings appear. Yeah. Uh, filler? Filler's. Select. All right, so that doesn't really do anything other than give me a shadow, which might be cool. Um, the shadow represents doubt. What layer am I even working on? Okay, good. Thought I had mucked up my colors. I have a question for you. Coriander Dickinson. Yep, yep. Go ahead, caller. Have you saved recently? Uh, no. Who does that? Uh, oh, uh, also, I completely um, breezed past your discussion of uh, the color of pomegranates. <laughs> Was there anything you wanted to say specifically about that film, which I have not seen? <laughs> I also haven't seen it. Okay. Thank you, Annoying Camera Guy, for 27 month resub. Love that guy. Love that guy. I'm just going to assume that the deer I'm drawing is fully accurate. Yep. I'm making the ears bigger on my main canvas than they were on my sketch canvas because bigger ears means more wise. Does it? Yeah. Ah, just 1,000 more rings to go. 1,000 more rings for me yet. Your Miet voice is different from mine. What is your Miet voice? Oh, mother. <laughs> oh, you kick me yet. 1,000 years dungeon. Mother, you kick me yet? Oh! 1,000 years dungeon. I just go for like melodrama, like breathless, how dare you kind of thing. Yeah, yours is more like diva. Well, Miet is a diva. She is the moment. What? Okay. Gotta own it. Yeah. Um. 
There's no way I'm going to make these antlers look at all fully alike. <laughs> so Miet is a lemon grab. Basically, lemon grab's a messy, drama-loving individual. Exactly, that's their character. Lemon Grab is such a Scorpio. What happens if I posterize this? Ooh, I'm gonna do it. If you what? Posterize, which is uh, limiting the range of colors. Oh, for print. Well. Yes, but it's like if you were doing large color blocks in printing, or like had if you were doing like paper art, right? Yeah. And you had like different layers, like CMYK uh, screen printing, or something. Something. Did they hide it? Posterize, where are you? Those are antlers. Um. <laughs> yep, they're, they're happening. They're now and they're wow. <laughs> Another half tone, maybe. Here. Ah, no, no, I take it back. Control Z, Control Z. Maybe fragment. I hit the button and nothing happened. Uh, that's when you know it's a good button. That's to when hit you it. know it's a good button. <laughs> so many blurs. Filter gallery. What does filter gallery do? Oh. It's a gallery Beyond of filters. Glow. Oh, yeah. How do I make this smaller? Yeah. Perfect. It's beautiful. I love it. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 diffuse glow, well oh, that's useless, oh, why do they even have that option, I don't know, poster edges, that's something, that has posterization in it, yay,
That looks like writing, right? <laughs> On the tie? Yeah. Yes. Don't forget to stretch your hand every once in a while. Uh, All right, so what if I dupe this layer? Then Oyster edges it. Am I? No, I'm not using that tool. <laughs> Are you making progress on your stump? Yeah, I'm just playing with uh, things. Ooh. Vivid light. know how to create the sun oh good we need more of that yay <laughs> it did it tree that's a tree that is exactly a that's tree, a tree. <laughs> thank you photoshop worth every penny Oh, jeez. All right. Oh, we're having fun here today, so that's all that matters. Oh, what if I want to do grass instead? Not on stream. Oof. That's illegal. It's legal. In, in our entire country, it's legal. Yeah, but what about the other countries? Well, sucks to be them. We laugh at their Asmar. Hmm. All right. I'm abandoning tree. Oh no, your tree. It's as wisdom as it's gonna get. Let's see how well this works. You your rim lighten? Uh I'm using a warm color with cold colors. Yes. They're complimentary. Yeah. Here you'll see the metaphor of the tie of wisdom constricting the neck. It shows just how constrictive and um, tight of a hold that wisdom can have over oneself. Mm.
What if just a big stack of books? Right? Not on fire, even. Hmm. The books were made from that tree. Yeah, it's like the giving tree. Yeah. Just like that. Just a bunch of books. Everybody loves books. And stacking them on top of each other. Not reading them, no. Acquiring them, yes. Yeah, I didn't learn until I was this many uh, that books are decorative. <laughs> it's like, this hotel has a lot of classic literature. Must be a smart hotel. For smart people. God. Yeah. That's how it be sometimes. Just like chunks of books that are just the facade of it and they're all stapled together yeah i don't even think you need to do that because like it's cheap enough to just get books oh but some people do but like facade books are a little fun because then you can have like secret compartments and stuff yeah Warmer color. That that's an interesting interior decorating tip I've never heard before. Put your books pages out so that it's a nice, neutral, unified look. Great. No one can tell that it's a manga collection if, if the pages are out. Yeah. Well, how, is, how am I supposed to know which volume of One Piece I'm currently reading if I can't see the numbers? <laughs> Hello, bookstore, local bookstore. I have a complaint. My book is broken. When I open it, I am at the end of the book. You know they've had warnings in them since the 90s. I only have one uh, manga myself in my personal collection. What? Um, and it is one of the volumes of uh, Happy October 3rd, Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the one with the fight against Lust and Roy. Uh-huh. I guess we all know what you got out of that series. Um, death. Yep. Same as everyone else. And that turns it orange. I do wonder what my high school teachers, upon seeing me reading it during a, the little like 20 minute reading session in class thought like, oh, look at that character. Hmm. TXC2, what is significant about October 3rd? It's when that one boy in class asked what the day was and that girl played by Lindsay Lohan in that one movie said mean it's Girls. October 3rd in Mean Girls. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's significant about October 3rd. Only day you can tweet this. Yeah. Only day. Yeah. 
Ooh, let's work in that. Why is this at max opacity? <laughs> Putting another book on the stack. Which one of you called the police? Sorry, that was me. No cops here. Also, I feel like I should clarify for people that the sirens are not always the police. They are often any emergency vehicle. Yeah. Primarily fire trucks. Primarily fire trucks. Yeah. Did you know that um, the bulk of fire trucks getting called out and going out to something is um, them just assisting the ambulances? Yep. At least up in Canada, for some reason, there's quite the shortage of uh, paramedics. Paramedics, yeah. Uh, there's a shortage of every medical profession. Yeah. Great. <laughs> That's out of frame. That doesn't exist. <laughs> The dear of wisdom, come ask me your questions and I will give you an answer. Good night, TXC2. Have sweet dreams. The dear of wisdom will visit you in those dreams and give you the one answer you seek. <laughs> Wow, just adding all that red really changed the vibe of this whole thing. You, you know deers and blood, right? Yeah. They love it. It's their favorite thing. They're full of it. I mean, I think that's that one. Uh, okay. We're looking at like uh, 15 more minutes. Yeah. Just doing a quick and dirty little drawing. That's what the people came here for. Quick and dirty. I'm actually curious to see 
what, what, what I have in the quote database. How, <laughs> you have how, a lot. How, how unhinged do I sound? A lot. Based on <laughs> words that I've actually, actually said. My hand's too sweaty in this glove. I think you've said that multiple times before. But have I been quoted? Saying I have sweaty, sweaty hands. I mean, make that query a quote, and that's how you really get. That's yeah. how you really own Corey here. Someone chat. Someone find quote. Yeah, sweaty. There we go. <laughs> find quote sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> Elemental alchemist, you can't just make up a quote. <laughs> and use an M dash. We're a civilized country. The M stands for metric. In M dash? Yeah. It starts with an E. <sighs> if you want to get technical about it. <laughs> I think you can go to m-dash.fam easily on Windows. That's that's how that's one of the ways. I usually just look through the Unicode symbol database. It stands for extremely metric. Yes. It's nothing. Nothing screams metric like text distances. Yeah. I mean, like little um, little editing tip slash trick for all you kids out there. Uh, whenever I'm doing one of the captions for something, um, and I want to put a TM symbol there, I just look up TM <laughs> and copy it. <laughs> I am never going to learn the keyboard shortcut for TM, and I'm OK with that. Elemental Al Alchemist, thank you for showing me the keyboard uh, shortcut for TM. I'm not going to perceive it or learn it, uh, but thank you. When I was a kid, I had a lot of fun playing with alt codes, mm, especially mm. when you could get the cool S. Cool. You can get the cool S? Not that cool S. Oh. It's a different cool S. Why are you playing with my heart like this? No, there is no Unicode cool S. God, Zoomers get on it. <laughs> I've painted myself into a corner by limiting myself to three colors because I don't want the same color touching. Oh, like a map? Yeah, I'm going to need some Katsune Miku fans out there to, to help me solve my color puzzle. Or not Miku, it was um Melancholy, wasn't it? It was Melancholy fans. Yeah. I'm drawing a very wise creature. But you already did, Matt. Um, there can be more than one wise creature out there. 
I don't know. Sounds unbalanced. <laughs> we can only have one smart person in our party. Otherwise, it's no fun. It's like having multiple gods of the harvest or something. Like, they're just going to be in competition with each other. It's going to get messy. There will be some wars. Everyone will die. Or... Or we could just have one. And be happy with it. Uh, this really is just a quick and dirty image, so that's about that for that layer. <laughs> Moving ever forward here. Honestly, your uh, uh, Lady Gaga 911 thing uh, reminded me of uh, the ambulance? the fall how i should the watch the fall uh because i've started to really follow the work of the costume designer who worked on that and uh the cell and other things mm. but very cool and your your lady gaga had had some stuff in it that looked a lot like their work but yeah. Also, yes, Lord Zorano, that's the coolest I was talking about. What cool? Oh, the money coolest. Or whatever. The sim yeah. the simoleon coolest. Double dollars. Double dollar. Now I'm just thinking questions like, why is a schwa an upside down E? It should clearly be a cool S, like that section S. That, yeah. that section S should be the schwa. Is that the name of that? Section S? Well, that's what it's for. Oh. Uh, I just know, know it as the symbol for uh, simoleon in The Sims. <laughs> Primarily, <laughs> anyway. Batawara. You know what we should bring back, though, is the thorn. I, we don't really have a use case for it. It's just whenever you're writing TH, just use thorn instead. You know? It's like, it's just a tall Y. A Y with one long arm. Sometimes you need a Y with one long arm. No, you know what we do need? More ligatures. <laughs> More ligaments. Uh, <laughs> we need big, beefy ligaments in our language. It's a symbol of strength, you know. Snack pack, what would a cool E even look like? <laughs> cool. It would look cool. Welcome, EDH420, with the writing party of two. Uh, we're going to be ending early today because there were issues with a bonus stream yesterday. So they're sneaking in a bonus stream before Dice Friends. Um... But in the meantime, we are experiencing cool S along with other yeah. pleasures. My hand got sweaty, so I'm just playing with a fidget spinner. Oh. And, and, and Matt's drawing a poodle. Now I can actually just... Yeah, let's just front and center that. Let's a look at that. It's a very sensible poodle and a very sensible... Uh, it's good knitwear. Yeah, knitwear. How do you feel about poodles, Corey? 
like standard poodles? You feel standard about them, or do you feel custom about them? Like they're a big, high energy dog. Yeah. Uh, they're intelligent. They get bored easily, which causes them to misbehave a lot or be a lot to handle. Yeah. Uh, I prefer like retrievers or simpler dogs. Simpler. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not particularly fancy, uh, full about poodles. Uh, but I absolutely love just the full diva action of a poodle that has been finely manicured. I just always think about Best in Show, and there's a poodle, and it's uh, the puffs around the hips are described as to keep the hips warm. Oh my god! Like, it's not even just fashion, it's we gotta keep joints warm. Yeah. Well, they um, originally shaved them like that because they were water rescue dogs, I think, right? Yeah. Closer to white. Okay. Yeah, I never thought about the purpose of a poodle until I heard that uh, particular bit of trivia and was like, oh, yeah, we need water rescue dogs, historically. Yeah. Sometimes you need a dog to just run on a wheel and turn your spit. Sometimes you need a dog that is really buoyant. <laughs> buoyant, yeah. <laughs> In spirit. And sometimes with uh, dogs like the fa the ever faithful Whippet or Greyhound, you just need a dog that go very fast. Sometimes eat only protein. <laughs> eat only protein. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I've had a Greyhound escape on me before. You have. Yeah, my 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 aunt uh, had to retired greyhounds one of them had oh. previously like broken their leg so he wasn't much for running because it's like we get too hot but uh yeah just you know take him out to an acreage have a run have a run oh there's a hole in the fence and now they're in the the backwoods yeah just going that is something they definitely tell you repeatedly often uh, when you are a newcomer to the sight hound group, which is whippets and greyhounds and any of the sleek running dogs, uh, keep them on a leash <laughs> because they will not, you will, you will not be able to chase after them. No. And they uh, will not come back until they're done. Yeah. But and man, can they go. Oh, they can, yeah. Yeah. Get those zoomies. Yeah, so I definitely spent a summer taking greyhounds for walkies and then feeding them chicken. <laughs> and then hearing them eat the bones. That happens, yeah. Yeah. It's like, here's Munch some chicken crunch. backs. Ready to go to Ooh. the store, get a pack of chicken backs, feed the dogs, take the dogs out. Is take them up to an island on a lake because that's cut off from land, so they can't really get away. Yeah, but they want to, they really want to. Uh, I think this is basically this sensible young lady working in the office. Yeah, this is Sharon. Um, and she always knows how to get the photocopier working. Right, right. It's like, if you ask her to get you coffee, it might happen. To save Sharon. Uh, there we are. All right. 
So, I mean, it, it feels like it's about the end. It does. It feels like Sharon's done. She's clocking out. And so are we on this lovely metaphorical uh, art stream, um, which I think last time I was on here, I mentioned I have a problem of keeping a bit too grounded in my artwork um, and not like extending it fancifully into metaphor. Um, I feel like I, I'm i expanding the borders of that personally a bit here, uh, but Sharon very much is a reality. Um, I'm down to earth as much as she is in this moment. Uh, so I'll have to work on um, the extended intentional metaphors in my art a bit mm -hmm. more. How do you feel about yours? I feel like I made I made some progress. Like I, I learned a couple things about the the order of operations in approaching like a sketch to getting towards like blocking out the colors and getting uh, kind of a sense. Like I have a real resistance to going back and redoing work. So yeah. some of the process is is like agony. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're not redoing the work if it was your sketch layer and you're drawing on top of it. You're building on the work if you do that. And then you'll just make the sketch layer invisible and it's like it never happened. Mm -hmm. And then you can build up on your next layer. <laughs> and I think uh, mostly I'm getting used to seeing my sloppy lines and stuff and so it's not looking as bad to me anymore mm. i mean that very much has to be something you approach art um for fun um with is letting your lines be a bit rickety a bit sloppy uh i mean like look at sharing her here that jaw is not as delicate as her real one. No. But I let it be. You know, you got to let it be. Her eyes are not pure darkness. There's a bit of light, a glimmer in there of hope mm -hmm. that she'll someday move out of this office job. But um, I guess I drew her metaphorically uh, having no hope. Even though she has a smirk on her face. Um, it's not a hopeful smirk. It's a resigned smirk. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a battle mask. That's a that that smile doesn't move on her face, whether yeah. something good has happened or not. It's her customer service face. Yeah, and her coworkers are also her customers. Yeah, because she's a member of a multi-level marketing thing. She's selling oh, pottery. Yeah, yeah. pottery. Ooh. Pottery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, we're really making a narrative here, just building up on it over and over again. And that's how you make art. It is. It's just, you gotta uh, put it out there and then you gotta look at it and then kind of reabsorb it and reinterpret it. Yeah. <laughs> it's... Because now, if she's uh, MLM Pottery Barn, then I don't know if wisdom is what she's really communicating. But maybe patience. Or long-suffering. Long-suffering. And I think, cupboards full of pottery. I think she's highly intelligent, but lowly wisdom -y. <laughs> no. Contingent Cat just has her number. She has big plans for the weekend for making soup. <laughs> <laughs> And selling it to her coworkers come Monday. <laughs> this is artisanal, therefore it's worth double the price. <laughs> These lentils, hand-picked. <laughs> well, it's been fun. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for thinking so. <laughs> There's no notifications to go through, so I guess we can just say bye bye and I'll see you next week. Enjoy the bonus stream Enjoy coming up shortly. The bonus stream after after this messages.
after this, the, these um, message from our sponsor, the internet. Oh, also tomorrow, uh, talking sim, I'm playing Cre Cre Necra. Necra? Uh, not, not Deathly. Uh, Cameron will be away, so I am left unattended yet again. <gasps> Dangerous. Yeah, I get to do whatever I want, such as play a game that someone suggested I play last week. Yeah. So, what? have fun, yeah. uh, good luck, um, and I'll do the same. Same to you, chat. Yeah. Same to you. Same to you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>